All right, I'm Matt Jones, and I am making an immersive RPG in Godot. And this is a remake of a video I did about two years ago on how to do bullets in Godot 3, and now I have it working in Godot 4 with a lot of improvements that I learned along the way. So let's uh, first let let. What do you mean by bullets? So first, oh wait, let me turn off all of this. So we have a little snowman guy that shoots bullets out of his, his gun here. And, uh, well, what's the problem with bullets? So, well, the first problem is bullets are going really fast. So, like, these ones go a thousand meters per second. So we have a stack of items here, uh, and we have a uh, indestructible steel cube here that spins around. So we want to be able to shoot these little cans here and have it react appropriately with the physics and apply force. Also, we don't want the bullets to just zoom through it and clip through it because it's going so fast and it's so small. And then we want them to also ricochet off this steel cube here at the correct angle and whatnot. Um, so uh, if we do the math on this, we got our little bullet going a thousand meters per second. And let's say we're doing 60 frames a second. That means each Oh wait, uh, yeah, each iteration of the physics engine, our bullet is going to be moving 16 meters. So it's like it's literally here, and then the next frame it is literally over here. So it went so far, like it doesn't travel between here, it literally is here, and then it's all the way here. So it would, if we were shooting at these little containers here, it wouldn't trigger a collision because it's it's just this little tiny bullet and it's going so fast. So what we do is we use a ray cast um, like this one coming out the back of the bullet. And the thing about that is um, essentially this can just measure what what the ray cast collides with. So if we start let's see the Raycast here, and if the bullet's here, and then on the next frame the bullet is here, we can just make the raycast stretch out to way over here where it was. So it'll be here, and then the next frame it'll be here, and then it'll say, oh, we collided with one of these things, and that's how it measures the collision. But the thing about that is, um, I still haven't seen a good solution about this, is Raycast can only detect one collision. So if we if we shot our bullet and we said, oh, look, we hit this little red box, and it went through and hit this, it's going to see the first thing it collides with, which is the, uh, the yellow box. But obviously, we want the first one it hit. So what we do is we... we uh, flip our raycast around backwards and we just have it start at the previous location so then when it scans it'll hit this first so um, uh, let me show how you how that works uh, the bullet it's it's just a node 3d we're not using physics for the movement of the collisions because it's too fast and too small in each physics iteration, we um, we essentially just have the velocity of the bullet, and we times it by the delta to get the amount of distance it moved, and then we just set the transform to that. So wherever it's pointed, it's going to move forward. And then uh, we have gravity here. Uh, so the bullets. So the bullets react to gravity. We can turn that on and off if we want. For now, we're doing that. Oh, um, we also have uh, ricocheting bullets. When the bullet hits one of these boxes, it just gets uh, deleted. But if you want it to ricochet like off this, what we do is we we check the distance, and if it's smaller than the minimum distance. Uh, we have a, a minimum distance here because we, we don't want it to be too small, so it's it's only moving a tiny bit. So we just have like a minimum, a minimum uh, 
bounce and a minimum ray cast distance. So if, if the, the the bullet only moved a tiny bit, we'll make it 0 0.05. Uh, the ray cast will set it to that. So we just say the position is the new distance and the uh, ray length is based on the, uh, the distance. And then we check for a collision. And if it's colliding, we get the collider, print its name out, and we move our ray cast to that position. And then we can be like, oh, well, what are we hitting? If it's a, uh, a box like one of these, one of these uh, large cans here, if you look, we have a, it's in the group item. And then our, our, our indestructible steel block here is, it has the uh, group item and elements. So then we can see, oh, does this have an element? Is it made of steel? Let's bounce off of it. And what that does is, um, here we're checking if it's steel or concrete. And we say, oh, it's steel. So we're gonna get the speed and we're gonna remove 20% of it using clamp here and we're going to change update its velocity using that and we're going to reset the gravity cuz it's bouncing off something we don't want it to be cumulative and uh continue to go down at the same speed cuz it's it's losing all its energy and bouncing and uh then we get the normal of the collision and we get the velocity and this this is something that um I had trouble with before I couldn't figure out when you want something to ricochet, you can just do velocity that bounce off of this normal, and that will uh, that will make our bullet so it it uh, gets gets the impact here, and then it will just like moink and bounce off of the angle and go go off in the new direction that it would normally be based on the uh, surface there. Um, and then we point the bullet in the new direction and then we uh, one of the other things about this is when the bullet hits something and then we want it to, to ricochet off we change the direction and whatnot but then on the next iteration it's gonna say oh we're still hitting it and then it's gonna bounce and then it's gonna bounce again and it's gonna it's it like tumbles because it's going to continuously see the collision as a new one. So what we do is we have a minimum bounce distance and here it's set to, I think before I had it as a meter, but now it is 0.1 meters. So what it will do is it will move it off of that 0.1 meters in the direction that it's going. So that will solve the problem of it continuously recolliding. Um, that's what happens when it hits the uh, steel block. So, and then if we're just hitting one of the little items, we get the mass of the bullet times the force, or the velocity times the mass to get the force, and then we just apply that to the can at that angle. So that that's how we get the little uh, these cans that get knocked around. So we can just continuously like blast it, bam, 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 bam like that. That's that's neat. And then the only thing left really is the uh, glow trails behind the bullets and the little spherical impact point. We, we have a little sphere. The um, the glow, it is just a mesh. Um, And that has, uh, an, it's set to immediate mesh. And then we have a glowy material that's uh, really bright and will glow with our environment setup. And what we do is we essentially just have a bunch of points, an array of points. Every time the bullet moves, uh, where is it? In the inside of the physics process, we have the glow here and we update its position. We say, okay, the bullet's at this position now. And then every time it moves, we just, we update its position. And we do this as many times as we can because again, with that calculation, I think it was, um, I 
1,000 divided by 60 frames. That's roughly 16 meters per uh, per movement. So uh, we want to have as many of these as possible. So we have um, we have it update multiple times and add to the points array. We just check the distance of the bullet. If it's less than, or if it's at least 0.1 meters, we add another point to the array. And then in the, um, the process function, this is where we draw it. So we have the immediate mesh. We clear all of the points. We say we're starting a new surface. We get, we get uh, each one, we, A and B, and then we just say, here's a vertex here at the start, and here's a vertex at the end. And we just do that for each point, and then we end it. And that's how we get these nice, um, nice glowing trails. And then we do the same thing for the sphere. It's, I guess we're calling it a spark. It's just a, a, um, a mesh sphere with a glowing material. And then it has a timer that where it dies after um, 0.1 seconds, it'll it'll free itself. Um, anyway, the code here is at immersive or it's at uh, GitHub.com/immersiveRPG/example/raycastbullets. I have the master branch is Godot 4, and then I also have the old example at under Godot 3. If you want to keep using that. But if you're using new Godot, which you, which you should be using, it's going to be at master. So you can check the code out there. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Um, if you want to find out any more stuff, you can go to immersiverpg.com. And if you want to help contribute, you can go to patreon.com slash immersiverpg. And if you have any questions, uh, put them below, uh, below the video on our YouTube here. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.